This is episode three of You've Been Gilmore. Rory, honey, do you understand? The Gilmores do nothing altruistically. Strings are attached to everything. There are no strings. No strings? No, I just have to pay them back starting five years after I graduate, and I have to start going back for Friday night dinners. Um, hello. Pinocchio, those are strings. But it was my idea to resume the dinners, and I obligated just me. You are in no way a part of it. This can't happen, Rory. I don't want you to defer your dream. You shouldn't have done this behind my back. Mom, Yale is my thing. I needed financing. I got it. Oh, those people, those master manipulators. Mom, this was my idea. Yeah, I'm manipulating you. They are manipulating you to manipulate me. How are they doing that? Rory, don't you see? If you go to Friday night dinners, Mom knows I'll go too, just to be with you. She wasn't thinking that. They're getting exactly what they want. Don't you see? We're all getting exactly what we want. It's a win-win-win situation. It's not. It is. Okay, maybe, maybe it is, but just once, just once, I want you to get exactly what you want, and me to get exactly what I want, and them to get nothing. Well, we'll see if we can arrange that sometime. But the ceremony's about to start. I better get back out there. And go buy that in! La la, la la, ah. la la, la la. All the way from Cranston, Rhode Island. Welcome to You've Been Gilmore. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Gilmore Girls on Netflix. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and a pint of ice cream and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm your host, Mary Larson. My name's Blake, and I wish I just could get a car like a Corvette. Uh, with a bow on it when I graduated high school. You know, you Wouldn't went to the wrong nice? school. Apparently, I, got, I had to go to Chilton, which, you know, I, I didn't know was, was a requirement to get a, a Corvette. I guess so. But uh, that would have been nice. That would have been great. Yeah. It would have been nice that, you know, if uh, my parents were as supportive as, as Lorelai was mm-hmm. uh, during that time. That would have been very good. If they bought you a car? Well, no, no, but just in general. They like, bought you a car. You know, but you had the, the great special scene at the end when... You know, that's actually it's going to be my my best okay, one. Right, so I'm, right. I'm not going to say it now, but I God, that's what I wanted. So we're talking about the episode titled "Those Are Strings, Pinocchio," and it is Rory's graduation day from her high school from Chilton. And this, of course, was also the day when um, Lorelai decides that she is going to buy the Dragonfly Inn. She and Suki were so incredibly excited about it, and then they found out, holy crap, the Independence Inn is going under. And Rory didn't get financial aid. And Lorelai realizes her dream can't come true because she needs to make sure that her daughter's dream can come true. So lots of great emotion. That is the context of the episode that we're talking about today because this we're talking about is saying one of the best uh, Lorelai and Rory episodes. And we're going to delve into that a little bit further. But right now, we're going to talk about our good, bad, greats, otherwise known as our GBGs. So, Blake, let me hear it. What was your GPG for this episode? Oh, I'm going first this time. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. My good was I was uh, tearing up uh, when Rory went to speak at her graduation, and I couldn't help it, even though they were saying, I'm not going to cry, I'm not going to cry. I was trying to say that to myself, too. And as they were saying, uh, we're not going to get worse, we're not going to blubber, we're not going to do anything, I got progressively worse. And with, (laughs) with every time, they cut back from Rory, and they cut back to Lorelai, and then back to Rory, and then Luke, I just, you couldn't help it, because it was like the culmination of everything that they had gone through from day one. Yeah. Uh, from the pilot, even, you know, what we spoke about last episode. You, you couldn't help but, but feel like, hey, wow, this is like a big deal here, man. Like, mm-hmm. uh, wh- what are we doing? Are you yeah, thinking away? Yeah, yeah, actually, it is you because, uh, never mind, don't worry about it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was the good. The bad was, uh, you know, I've never been a huge fan of Paris. Okay. Because I feel like they tried to make her a tough and smarter Lorelai or Rory. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it almost feels like she has Asperger's a, a little bit, like, or or some kind of like, uh, like she, she reminds me of Sherlock. Remember, remember how he was saying Sherlock has Asperger's. Yes, she reminds me of that. Okay, uh, and not like a character that you would like be cool with. I, like I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. I just feel like I, I've never liked her uh, in the way that they wrote her, and especially in this episode, she was like, I kind of hated you. 
Yeah. Wow. And, you know, just because he didn't get back to me about the Pledge of Allegiance doesn't mean I'm not going to do my favorite things in air quotes. Mm Mm-hmm. Come on, Paris. Like, what are we doing here? You know, I just, I was never big, a big fan of Paris. Okay. And how about your great? What was your great? My great, and this is going to be kind of contrary to this entire episode because this, I believe, is the best Rory and Lorelai episode. And you would think that the great would involve Lorelai or Rory. However, it doesn't. The great is Luke's dream mm. when he's asleep and uh, you think that Lorelai is showing up at his door because it's the way that it was edited. Uh, that they have gone from Chilton to Luke's and Lorelai says, when you go on your cruise, don't get engaged. Oh, and you were like, yeah, you were thinking, oh, my God. Yes, this is it. Oh, my God. Blah, 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 you know, and then you realize, no, they're still at Chilton and they're it's getting towards the end of the episode and they're going to do whatever they're going to do. But this is one of those interesting things that often doesn't happen uh, in shows like this. Usually they're very straightforward, but uh they attempted something and you could feel it the entire episode too right Mm -hmm. Uh, of luke and lorelei and and how they felt about each other although they just couldn't damn say it but you got a good confirmation when luke fell asleep and when he woke up he jolted out of it and he was almost like he wanted to believe it too just as much as we wanted to believe it Mm -hmm. Uh, and i thought that was the great thing because then that does that does set up the rest of you know the run of gilmore girls for luke and lorelei in a lot of ways well we'll get into that later but this was a perfect way to end season three, in my opinion, because awesome. this was obviously the finale yes. of season three. My love, what do you got for your GBG? I was my good is Rory. Rory made a decision to go talk to her grandparents herself um, to to work out this situation. I mean, she knew that she was able to have Chilton for the most paid for because of her grandparents and the deal that they struck with Lorelai. And I really loved that Rory was so selfless. Where she, she realized that her mother was going to throw away her dream so that Rory could go to Yale. Mm-hmm. And I loved that literally on the way to graduation, like Rory wouldn't let this wait because she knew someone else was going to scoop up the dragonfly in. Right. So she stopped on her way to graduation in her graduation dress, everything to go talk to her grandparents. And I was just really proud of Rory because, um, in, in latter seasons, Rory does things that I'm not really proud of her for. And I thought that this was one of her most upstanding moments in all of the Gilmore girls. Mm-hmm. I was really, and I just loved it. Um, uh, my bad is a little too much boy time. <laughs> and that's what I have to remind myself that, Rory is a high school senior and it's okay that she's like making doe eyes with Dean who's engaged and she's like, "Ah, get the knife sharpener because you really need sharp knives. Like it was just awkward and yet amazing and lovely. And then the phone calls with Jess, but there was just so much in this episode that the boys to me felt like noise and I know they needed to be in there. And I know even the Luke part had to be in there. Just like what you were saying, like we love Rory and Lorelai in this episode. So, but I was, it, it reminded me of how I felt in high school and how boys distracted me. You know, it's like you could be having the best day ever. You could be valedictorian of your graduating class going to you, which is now paid for through your grandparents. And you've got this whole deal going off. Your mom just bought an in and yet Jesse prank calls you. And it ruins ruins a couple of moments for you. So th- I, you know, I that's just me being like my bitter little this high school girl. This is why I girl. hate Jess because he's such a little fake emotional yeah. dink. Yeah, I can I can Ooh, appreciate it. Like I so I love pained. Jess and I love older Jess. Right now, Jess right. pisses me off. And <laughs> Jess great, is a, Jess is a clown right now. My great was Lorelai. In what way? In the way that she was giving up her dream. Because Lorelai has done this so much for Rory. I mean, Mm -hmm. Rory even said it in her commencement speech. Like, my mom has raised me and gave me, like, every single opportunity under the sun. And Lorelai was still there, so proud of her daughter. Tears in her eyes, all this stuff, just so excited, not... Not knowing what kind of a job she was going to have. Right. Not knowing what even the future was going to be for her. And yet she still had a smile on her face because it was all about Rory. Mm-hmm. And she didn't let her dreams kind of come in that way. And I just think that this was the most like selfless episode between the two of them that Rory was able to do things for Lorelai and Lori- Lorelai was able to do things for Rory for both of their big, big, big dreams to come true. Right. Uh, what do you got for best line? You, do, you want, do you have one or do you want me to give mine? You can give yours. All right, my best line for the, for the whole episode uh-huh. was the end when she says, do you hear that? It's not so scary anymore. 
And she's referring to Chilton. And, but but it's more than that too. It's it's moving on in life and mm-hmm. and getting getting older and becoming your own person and getting onto Yale and all of that is encompassed in what it is to become uh, not only an adult but a Gilmore adult. Yeah. And I really appreciated that because it's Lorelai telling her daughter, "It's okay. Mm-hmm. We're okay. I'm gonna get the dragonfly in. You're gonna go to Yale." Life isn't that scary anymore. It isn't. Right? And yet it is sometimes. (laughs) It's going to be scary as soon as we come back from our trip. That's right. Well, more more on this in a little bit, by the way. I'm going to go, I'm going to go like super deep on this one today because I really love this episode. Good. Uh, And that's why I think we picked it as the best Lorelai and and Rory episode. My love, what do you get for a coffee rating? I give it a 4.5. You know, I'm going to go right there with you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go right there with you. Um, a good, a good, uh, a good easy episode. Uh, it's almost like a, uh, a look back on what was. Mm -hmm. And it was a distinct cut, obviously quite, quite nearly in the direct middle of the entire Gilmore Girls episode run. Um, and then it's now a, 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 a jumping off point for the rest of the Gilmore, Gore, G- Gilmore Girls run as, as a show. Uh, and I liked that a lot. So it was a good, clean episode, well-written, uh, had everything, except for the boys. The boys, you're right. The whole thing with Dean no, in the beginning... No, but they're like high school boys, and that's why you can't, you can't knock them too much. I'm just, because... I'm just over Dean and Jess. I'm over Dean and Jess. We're going to talk about this. <laughs> We're going to talk about All right, this. Well, you ready to get into the recap for the show? Yes, I am. All right, let's do it. All right, so this episode, as we talked about, was called "Those Are Strings." Pinocchio. Oh, oh wait, this is my this is my job. Holy crap! I know well, you pointed at me, and I'm like, I oh, did. I guess I'm all of a sudden the fact giver. <laughs> so, episode title is "Those Are Strings." Pinocchio, uh, obviously, as we played in the beginning portion of the clip at the first part of the this episode, uh, also written by Daniel Palladino, the husband of Amy Sherman Palladino. Uh, he wrote this episode and directed by Jamie Babbitt, another female director who actually directed 18 long episodes of Gilmore Girls and has since worked on many, 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 many great TV shows uh, or lots of TV shows and some junk there, too, uh, but including uh, Rizzolian Isles, The L Word, uh, Pretty Little Liars, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Supergirl, Mary's current favorite, Girls. It's not my current favorite. Well, you, you kind of watch it all the time. No, I don't. You do a little bit. I, I was watching it a lot. Mm-hmm. I was watching it a lot, and then it and then I just was realizing it wasn't making me happy because <laughs> it's it's a tough show to watch if you're not feeling happy. And, and especially since you don't want to ruin Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. He was already ruined. That is who I picture <laughs> as Kylo Ren. Just this. You you can't watch. No, girls no, I'm not it watching. I refuse Kylo to watch Ren. girls. Yes. there's no zero girls happening. Do not. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, if you have never watched girls and you're a Star Wars fan, don't watch girls. Kylo Ren will be ruined unless Kylo Ren turns out to be the same exact type of person that Adam Driver portrays in girls. Right. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't don't go towards the light. She's also worked on Silicon Valley as well, so you're getting some good HBO shows as well some of the stuff i didn't even name uh my love how are we going to now that i've done my job finally and you didn't do it for me you can now do your job how are we going to attack this episode today oh that is a grand question i mean we're talking about this being our favorite like lorelei and rory episode so let's break it up into interactions with either rory or lorelei and i'm going to start with we're going to start with the lesser folk interacting with rory all right what do you got throwing it out there dean Throwing it out there, okay? So Dean, at this point, is engaged, and he's planning his wedding, and he and Rory meet at the town meeting, which I freaking love those town meetings. If I had town meetings like that, I would be at them all the time with popcorn. I pretty much am Lorelai Gilmar. That would be the best thing ever. (laughs) Um, So, you know, there's this really awkward moment, and I honestly love the high school tension between these two actors. I really do. I believed it in season one. I believed it here where there was just like this longing and it really mirrored the longing that you would see in like Lorelai and Luke's eyes a little bit. Like, I want you and I think you want me, but I'm not really sure. And this is kind of awkward. But Dean is getting married. This young guy is getting married and 
Rory said, I'm going to buy you, you know, your wedding gift here. I've circled which ones are great in total Rory fashion, like really thinking a lot about Dean. Mm -hmm. And um, so, it, I, you know, we see the makings of this ain't going to a great place. And it's I, I don't know. I It just makes me feel like I just you just need to have a clean break sometimes. And maybe in Stars Hollow, you can't. So no, you can't. You can't have a clean break in a small town like that. What are you nuts? everybody's in everybody's business. Like we had a neighbor when we lived in Providence, they called her the mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I referred to uh, Miss Patty as the mayor mm -hmm. uh, of Stiles Hollow because she's in everybody's business. Yep. Uh, we had a neighbor, neighbor like that. All she did was just like hunt us down for information and like spy on us. And, she didn't spy. Oh, uh, there was some spying going on. And that's how Stars Hollow would feel to me a tiny bit. Even though I, I find it a quite romantic idea to live there, I also feel like I would probably get a little annoyed uh, that everybody was in my stuff. Well, what do you think about Dean? So Dean is engaged. He's not married at this point. But he's getting married. Yes. And you can tell there's, it's still awkward, especially because Rory now has this thing with Jess. And you wonder, and obviously, spoiler alert, she kind of does go back with, with Dean for a little bit there. You could see the, You could see the seeds being planted uh, in, this, in this particular episode. And I got to tell you, if you're watching it as it's happening, that's pretty, uh, pretty freaking lame. Not gonna lie. What's lame? It's pretty lame that they're bringing Dean back into the fold. Dean lives in Stars Hollow. Rory's the one that's coming to hang back, and she's gonna come back and visit during college. Right. Dean is a hometown boy who isn't gonna leave, and this is why people hate small towns those that do because you see your ex all the time and your ex is in with someone else or maybe then you sleep with your ex again or bad things happen and good things but happen just as a television small. show but just as a television show though i mean you're you're not only are you cutting the cord kind of with stars hollow because this is the last time that rory is going to live with her mom full time this is the last time that she's going to spend full time in stars hollow and you're sending her off to college next season going to yale uh it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like when you go to college. I remember when I went to school, uh, uh, I had a girlfriend uh, when I went to school in, at college, and my dad was quite disappointed in me. Why? And I, and I was like, Dad, why? What, what's going on? Why are you so upset? He goes, kid, you don't bring sand to the beach. And <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> so what, what that means essentially is you don't bring a boyfriend to college because there's so many other boys out there or you, there's so many other girls. You don't want to waste your time with someone that, you know, you, you know you're not going to be in touch with. You're not going to see that all, all that often. And that's the thing that I have a problem with Dean about. And, and then just story level. Why bring him back when you have such a wide variety of things from which because you can choose why life. bring sand to the beach because you did and i did and countless other people had high school romances that they continued on to so but, it's real uh, but uh, but i i've learned from a very great podcast the scott and assassinock uh who who they story wonk they podcast a whole about a whole di bunch of different things and they're professional writers and i i've listened i've heard them say this and it's really important reality isn't an excuse for a story you oh. should you should do things that best fit the story, right? Does that make sense to you? But I disagree with that. Really? You can agree with that. I like it because I'm like, that's real life. <laughs> it and is real life. And that's what I life. said about Lorelai in the last episode is it's like adulting. You know, it is real life. You're like, look at me. I'm so put together. Oh, crap. I can't afford anything. Yeah. You know, I don't know. That's why I like the Gilmore Girls, because in so many ways, it's like fantastical and amazing, and they're drinking so much coffee and talking so quickly, and everything's beautiful, and then it's like, crap, it's the fan. Right. But I wanted them, I wanted this to be, uh, like, again, it is a good jumping off point, but I wanted this to be, okay, let's put Dean and Jess to bed now, because Jess is on the phone, he does this creepy, weird thing, and then he doesn't talk, uh, and then... Uh, and then you have Dean who's getting married and he says they finally actually literally say goodbye. And you're thinking, this is where we're going to go. Thank God. And they, they don't do it. But I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. You can, we can accept it as, as real life. And I'm fine with that. And, that. and with Jess, I was mad at Jess at this point. My opinions of Jess, of course, changed over time, but this really pissed me off about Jess. Like, you rained on this girl's parade. Granted, Lorelai with her little safety pin, let's carve our names into the woodwork of Chilton, changed that frown and turned it upside down. But mm -hmm. Jess, 
Like, really? You're calling her on the day of her graduation, which I get, but then you're silent. Like, what are you doing? You infuriate me. Leave me alone. I'm glad you're in California. So mm-hmm. that's kind of why I started with like the lower, lower people on the totem pole. No, I get you. I um, get you. You know who I, I, I really was happy that Suki and Luke were at commencement, were at graduation mm-hmm. because Rory, they're Rory's friends for real. They're her family. I mean, she had such an estranged relationship with her grandparents and we've seen her spend so much time with these adults. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about? about them in this episode well before i get into that I, I just have to say this this is for everyone watching live on facebook live my sister shannon larson is watching the show right hello, now hello shannon sissy my darling thank you so much for watching us i really appreciate that i love you i love you very very much okay sorry <laughs> uh what do i think about all the adults being there i you know i was so happy that luke was able to get there i was so happy uh you know, I, I could deal without Jackson, especially when he wears his little penis hat. It makes it, it makes it look he like. He didn't wear, it was, it was spring, so he didn't have that hat. I know, on but you know time. what I'm talking about though, right? It, it always looks like he's wearing a penis. Oh, can you please not say it? We're in Facebook Live. <laughs> um, and then I, I thought Suki was funny, always going in and out of, uh, of the line, mm-hmm. uh, bumping into people. She's saying, hey, I suck. I'm sorry. I'm never going to do this I'm again. never like this. No, yeah. But I am today. <laughs> you know? And then even how literally like the, the headmaster of the school is speaking and she's just standing straight front and center just so she can get pictures of, of Rory. <laughs> and Perfect. They, they have the shot looking from the back of the speaker. When you see, all you see is Sookie just taking all of... <laughs> All of the photos. That's it. Unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable. But, and I really feel like this is the best. I mean, let's just get to it. This is the best Rory and Lorelai episode because it is a beginning and is an end. It's a celebration of all that Rory and Lorelai have gone through. I mean, this is a literal break. Uh, it's a literal transition from, uh, from Rory being a kid to becoming an adult. Mm-hmm. And the last ditch effort that Lorelai has is to carve her initials into something at Chilton. It's something to remind not only herself, but the people of Chilton that I raised my daughter. Mm-hmm. I raised the person that I love most because I did. And I did a good job. She, she was a uh, valedictorian and we were here. And they became like equals on this day. I think things change, as I say, as the seasons go on. But on this day, when they were both willing to give up something that was so important to them or, or to, you know, they both made sacrifices to right. help and, each other. It's like that Magi, the gift of the Magi. You know that old story? I do. Everyone knows it. We all had to read it in like eighth grade or something where, you know, someone got a gift. Why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> just not a good book. Sorry, I didn't like it. It wasn't a book. It was a short story. Well, you know what I mean. But it, that's what it was like this episode, except nobody lost. As Rory said, it was a win-win-win. Right. And and here's the thing, too. You, I, I, that's, that is a very uh, pertinent thing that you suggest, that they are equals, because they are equals. Rory herself says, Yale is my thing. She's the one who makes the deal. Mm-hmm. She's the one who gets the money. She is the one who who allows Lorelai to buy the Dragonfly in. And it's almost Lorelai was was gifting her Rory her life. Yep. She was she gifted her Chilton. She worked hard and she went to her parents to get the money. And then when Rory becomes an adult, she goes to the grandparents to get the money to gift Lorelai her life, her her future life with the dragonfly in. It's poetic. It it sinks. It rhymes. It's it, it's perfect, and it rhymes even further because this season ends with Emily saying, "I'll see you Friday night." <laughs> yes. It be the first season. The first show begins with Friday night dinners beginning, mm-hmm. and then the 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 last show of episode three is Friday night dinners returning. How amazing is that? Very. And it's it's great for all three generations of Gilmores. It could have almost, had it not been for the boys sprinkled in, yep. I'm glad it didn't, but you could have ended the show. Had it just been through the high school years. You know, we ended up going through Rory's high school and well, college, you, I think, I think but it was like have. a nice bow. It was a nice tied bow 
um, on on so much of it. So I'm glad that it went on. A lot of things need to get through. We need to get through a lot of actually. Well, think think of this. Think of how the show actually ended. Spoiler alert. Uh, you know, Lorelai has her life with the Dragonfly in. She, you know, is back and forth with Luke. Uh, Emily, uh, it, it, they're continuing uh, Friday night dinners, obviously. Uh, but the boys are kind of left to dust. They kind of like they kind of just go away. What ifs? And that is exactly how this would have ended had, as you proposed, the show ended on this season, mm-hmm. right? Because all the boys are gone. Lorelai has her life. Lor- Rory goes off to college. Friday night dinners are still happening. Everybody's happy. We're, that, that's what we're talking about here. And it would have been a good ending. Yeah. And it. W- I'm glad it wasn't. Listen, Lord knows I need me some more lower life. There are a lot of people out there that say seasons one through three of Gilmore Girls are the absolute pinnacle of what Gilmore Girls is. I disagree. I love four through seven. Uh, and that's where I really, and maybe I'm biased because that's where I got sucked in. Yeah. Like I got sucked in about halfway through season three. You can't fairly say it, you know, because you didn't, you didn't get to start from the beginning. Right. Your beginning was midway through. Right. So. But regardless, uh, regardless of my opinion, ratings did go down. I checked ratings did go down after season three ended. It's because there was, it was, it did feel like a, a final chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did feel like, um, it did feel like uh, closure in many clo- ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? And I think people said, okay, we're good. That's it. That's it. But the beautiful thing about this is that Lorelai and Rory are rhyming with each other. And you get to see how far they grow together from the pilot, even all the way till now. And this is why I, I really wanted to tackle this episode right now mm-hmm. because. You saw, you had the beginning so and then growth. boom right there at the end between the two of them. Uh, the other thing that really stood out was the stark con. This I mean it was actually more alike. But the conflict between Emily and Lorelai between the pilot episode of Gilmore Girls and then this the season three finale. Mm-hmm. You know, so much happened in between these two episodes, and yet it is back to really cold really Mm -hmm. really cold and emily goes through waves i mean she's not a peach as we all know but this episode was very cold between emily and lorelei and she wouldn't even sit next to her at graduation and when she even did she left the seat and she just kept (laughs) making little snarky remarks it wasn't really clear if if the seating arrangement had been figured out yet it's like i can't even you're just purposely busting balls yes purposely and then when lorelei shows up emily's like hello and like in that Emily way, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I do. It's just like, n- mm It's right up your spine. Oh, God. It's yeah. chills, willies right up the spine. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I, I really loved this episode. I couldn't help but, but tear up as Rory is giving her speech and, te- and telling everybody. Blubbering. A blubbering. Blubbering. I was blubbering. I, I was blubbering mess. That yep. was me. Uh, Lor- Rory saying, all I wanted to do was be my mom. You know, I, I went through all these things. I read Moby Dick, and, and oh wait, I know we made fun of Moby Dick uh, last episode, but all she really wanted to do was be her mom. And I can only hope that either my son or my daughter say the same exact thing about me. And by, by the way, it, this was pl- perfectly equal uh, for for her grandparents, too, by the way. She called Rory called out her grandparents and no, notice, by the way, the the change in Richard from the pilot to what a season nicer three finale. man. Oh, my word. This is this is Richard Gilmore to me. Mm-hmm. This is what makes things happen. This is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I only wish that my son and my daughter say the same exact thing about me uh, because uh, that I, I if my if my kids said that about me, it would, not only would I be a blubbering mess. I think I, I would I would I would I would evaporate. <laughs> yeah, just gone. <laughs> well, on that note, that is why we think it is the best Rory and Lorelai episode. It was filled with a lot of other people in there, but this was quite a monumental episode. And now it's time for some trivia. Let's do it. All right, so. The uh, first bit of trivia that I got here, when the character Brad Langford, you know, the kid that that sang at at the the dais, uh, when he returns to Chilton Academy after the absence of several months in season three, 
He explains that obviously that he was away playing Jack in Into the Woods on Broadway. The kid, Adam Wiley, his real name, he was actually really away from the series playing Jack in the 2002 Broadway revival of Into the Woods. Can so you Brad imagine wasn't that? Lying, he actually. wasn't lying. He actually did it. Okay, so Milo, aka Jess, and Alexis, clown, okay, so Jess and Rory actually dated in real life. Forget this, three and a half years. Oh my god! Three and a half years in TV land. Is- <laughs> What? That is literally like a half a century. <laughs> half a century. So way to go. Makes you wonder if anything is going to be rekindled since uh, they spend time oh on the on the reunion. And I can't even look at Milo Ventimiglia the same anymore just because I just hate his character oh so much. Oh my god. Much. Well, you need to start watching This Is Us. Paris's full name, we discover in this episode, is Paris Eustace Geller. And also, con- uh, concordantly, we also find out that Rory's full name is Lorelai Lee Gilmore. And this last fun fact, really interesting, Blake. Yes, it is. An alternative ending was actually filmed with Lorelai having a flashback of young Rory and younger Lorelai at the Independence Inn, which would make so much sense. And God, I wish they had done this a little bit because Lorelai had mentioned how much that Rory had grown up in Mm -hmm. Independence Inn. Again, it's closing the chapter. It's closing the book on the earlier part of their lives together. Yep. That would have been so... That Again, we're talking about rhyming. We're talking about it uh, bringing back those emotions. That would have brought back those emotions. We had a lot of emotions going on nonetheless, though, so I really enjoyed that episode. <laughs> My love, uh, final thoughts uh, about this episode. Do you have any? I want Lorelai Gilmore's dress that she wore to Rory's graduation because it was hot and yet sophisticated And the red just popped, and yet it was very, I'm at a graduation, and this is formal. (laughs) It was perfect. It's like the perfect wedding dress slash graduation dress, and girlfriend knew how to rock it. My final th- final thought of this was... Yes, do you like how deep my final thought just was? Yeah, no. But that it, I want to shop it, in Lorelai's closet? It's actually going to be just as deep as mine. Ready? Okay. Uh, my final thought is I love the town meetings. And I love when they <laughs> when Luke was like, I think it... I didn't think it was possible for everybody to lose their train of thought for 60 people to happen at the same time, and it did. And I really like that, especially when Kirk... <laughs> this was almost my... Neg- this is almost the best line. Kirk says <laughs> he wants to unleash a pack of wolves to deal with <laughs> the Stars Harlow deer problem. He's like, you release a pack of wolves, then they eat the deer, problem solved. Of course, then you have to deal with your wolf problem. This is literally how some places have dealt with deer of a population. <laughs> what conversations what like this? Oh, yeah, let's do. The- yes, people will have these conversations. Oh boy! Oh well, let's close out the show. Let's do it. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Ah, ah, la, la, la. So you've. Been- Gilmore is a podcast that we do through our company and you can continue the conversation by actually utilizing the hashtag you've been Gilmore. No punctuation is needed. Just you've been Gilmore and that way we can find you, you can find us and we can get feedback because we're going to want to know your thoughts for next week's... Well, not what next week. It's going to be next, next week. The next episode. is not going to be next week. <laughs> so I, I think the next episode uh, is going... I'm not sure. Can, honey, can you save me while I look this I'm up? I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you. You can find all of our other podcasts at maryandblake.co. That shows you Outlander Cast, The Living Reminders, Parent Cast... Wicked Roadie, and of course, your hub, You've Been Gilmore, which is now in iTunes, so make sure you're subscribed. Now, thank you for saving me, by the way. My pleasure. The next episode is going to be the best Lorelai and Luke episode. And I have to say, I'm quite partial to this one. It's Written in the Stars, Season 5, Episode 3. And for the for you Gilmore Girls nerds out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but for those of you who don't remember quite so much, go back, watch the show, watch the episode, and uh, speak with us about Written in the Stars. Because, oh my God, that was unbelievable. I'm so happy about it. And uh, we, we won't be live for that episode, uh, but we will be live hopefully for the following episode. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Until next time, ladies and gents, my name is Mary Larson. And I'm Blake. And you've been listening to You've Been Gilmore.
You've Been Gilmered is a production of Mary and Blake Media. We don't really know too much. We just talk about way too much. And so if we've hurt your feelings or if we've misquoted something or heck, if you are thinking about doing anything based upon our advice, please don't. Don't. Because <laughs> if you screw it up, then you can't sue us because we just said this. So this is our disclaimer. Don't sue us. Thanks. <laughs>